he's got talent and uh, actually just got news this morning that I advanced to finals for Belize Got Talent so I got a chance of uh, actually if I win that I get money as a, a cash prize so um, it's not just for free and I'm not just doing it for doing it okay. I'm also doing what I love and um, trying to get rewarded for it you know okay um, I just, oh my gosh, I had some technical difficulty just now and that introduction did not get recorded. So I got to do it again. <laughs> I know. Okay. So guys today at the moment, right now I'm talking to my brother. Um, he is a performer and a musician. Can I, can I say that Harry? Can I say you're a performer, musician, artist? Yeah, I can say that. Right. Anything as long as it's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's also a really great youth mentor. We've actually worked together with youth mentorship. He is a really great spiritual advisor, as well. He was my spiritual advisor, and you know, I, I I get a lot of mentorship from him a lot of the time when it comes to my own spiritual development. And he is right now focusing a lot on his um, career as an artist, which is something that I identify with a lot as an artist as well. I'm a visual awesome. artist. He's a, um, what would I call that? Audio artist? Is that a thing? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Musical artist. I, so that sounds like that makes more sense, right? <laughs> yeah. He's in Belize and, you know, I just invited him to come on uh, my YouTube channel to talk a little bit about what the journey has been like and where he's at right now. So, I know you want to promote this um, competition that you're in right now. So just tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, the, I think the both competitions that I'm in are equally important to me. But okay. There's one that's going to be more beneficial as far as a immediate financial return, and that will okay. be the Lee's Got Talent show, which, okay. um, you know, thanks be to God, thanks to my fans, I actually got to – make it to the final round okay so we're looking okay. at that, that final round coming up this saturday i believe where i have to submit another video completely different from the first one um to in hopes of actually winning the first prize okay. which is uh two thousand dollars belize so okay um gotta say you know thanks to my to people who supported me to get me into the final round okay but also um you know, we got to step it up. We got to make sure that Craven is number one if we hope to win this this coming weekend. You know, I'm definitely happy that I made it and looking forward to uh, doing great things in the future, you know. Right, right. So, what has the journey been like for you? As a, I know, you know, I saw that you were um, on the Pandy show. You were also, as a, this whole thing about technology is just super exciting for me because I could remember actually talking to you about six months ago. Like you got to make sure that you have everything out there. You have to use social media. You have to use Instagram. And now it's like happening. Like every time I open my Facebook yeah. account, you're there on some show or the other um, promoting your music. So how has that journey been for you in terms of the amount of man hours that has gone into the actual marketing and the actual like event planning. You know, that's um that's a really, really good question and something to reflect on because a lot of people I got a message um and I think it's because of the same kind of stuff that you're saying that you just mentioned that you keep on, you know, as you open your phone on any social media uh, platform, boom, Craven is there. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been getting a lot of friend, friend requests from like random people, messages from random people asking me questions about, hey, how long have you been rapping? You know, just random right, stuff. Um, right. That's one of the questions I got was, um, you know, is it hard? Is it something that's easy to do or is it right, a hard thing to do? Right. I, mm -hmm. I told that person, same thing I'm going to say about uh, to you. It's not something that you should take as, yo, I come in here and I'm just going to master this easy, right. quick, thing. Right. right? It's not like that. You have to put in your work just like anything that you want to do, anything that you want to do and be successful at. Right. You actually have to put in your man hours. You got to put in the time. And honestly, with music, it's a, it's a lifestyle. It's not just, uh, you know, I'm going to put in eight to five and expect that 
this empire is going to be built. No, you're talking about, I wake up in the morning after meditating and giving thanks to God. The first thing you've got to start thinking about is, do I have anything planned musically that I have to work on? Do I have anything that I have to start working towards? Because I look at all the you know artists there that I look up to, and I'm, I'm, we're going to get to that too. Yeah. And I see, I know, I notice one thing that they all have in common. You know, um, when I try to look far back in the past for, hey, you know, when were these artists at my stage? I always find yeah. the same thing that they have years and years and years yeah. of work that they were putting in before they became famous. So some right. of them were like ten years. Even, um, there's a lot of work they have to put in to get where, to where they where, where they where, where they are now. Right, um, right. And promotion wise, I think that's one thing I learned from watching these these uh, top notch artists. You know, is that if if you people are not seeing you, if people are not hearing you, they don't know you exist. How do you expect to get anywhere with your music if it's not even being heard? Right, and, um, right. So that's kind of a mindset I adopted to, to my new methods that I'm applying now as far as promotion is concerned. Just keep my stuff out there, you know, keep it rolling, keep the commercials going. You right, know, right, bombarding. right. Not really I actually, best, but just I like mean, when you're watching TV, there's always going to be that same commercial that your kids are going to memorize. <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah, they come to you and start singing this song, right? I actually wanted to ask you, like, what is it that actually made you want to become a musician? Because we've actually never talked about that. It was just a thing that, you know, you've been doing competitions ever since you were in high school. Remember, I went and I supported when you did the Desiderata. Oh, my gosh. I can't remember the name. But it was this really important um, mantra that grandpa had in his house and you would memorize it and you would perform it and I don't know if you would want I thought oh, you yeah. should have Desiderata, Desiderata. Desiderata. I love that oh my gosh you know like I actually painted one but anyways um, like when I when I, I remembered thinking to myself I have got to ask him why he wants to be a performer and I never did and so now I'm going to do that right now why what made you want to be a performer, an artist, a rapper, musician? Yeah. You know, sometimes I wonder that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 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 it's a vague memory because mm -hmm. I was so young. I was like maybe nine or ten years old. Okay. And I think at that point, you're coming close to your teenage years and you're questioning, hey, uh, what am I going to be when I grow up? You know what I mean? Um, what am I going to be? I'm a man. I'm a little boy, so I'm going to become a man. What kind of man am I going to be right. when I grow up? And usually those, those are questions that you normally would ask a man, you know? And, uh, some people are fortunate to have a man around called the father. <laughs> you can ask those types, types of questions. Too. Uh, I, I was not so fortunate. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, rest in peace. I talk to the first. Um, you know, he passed away when I was eight. You, you know that as well. Right. But just for the audience, you know, that mm -hmm. is something that played a major role in this choice, I, I believe, of me wanting to rap, wanting to be a musician, wanting to be uh, a voice to be heard, so to speak. Because uh, that's where I found my advice, my role models, is a lot of, a lot of music that I used to listen to. And... Of course, naturally, I want to do the same thing that, okay. you know, these people that I looked up to, I wanted to do the same thing they were doing. That's and interesting. so I started okay. off just experimenting. And really, my brother Emil had a lot to do with it because he's like a year and a half ahead of me all the time since birth. <laughs> so, <laughs> not um, changed. <laughs> just seeing him ahead of me doing things he did. You know, made me feel like okay, at least I got a little bit of of a, of a guidance here. So as he was the first one, really, that was like starting to do it, mm -hmm. started trying, you know, coming up with his own lines, writing his own stuff, and of course, most naturally, I followed and wanted to do it. And uh, don't tell him this, but of course, I wanted to do it better, like any little brother would. I mean, this so, is gonna be on YouTube, so <laughs> we hope he never sees this video. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's okay. how it started for me. Um, okay. I, we lived in Dangriga at that time, mm -hmm. if you remember. Um, my uncle 
Uncle Simeon's house, a lawyer. Yeah. So I lived yeah. in that house at the time. And we really had nothing else to do other than be on the streets or stay inside and mess around with music and pretend to be rappers. Which is the <laughs> one that I chose sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. As a, do you have... Um, any instruments that you play? Why do you play them? And how long have you been playing them? I'd, I'd say my number one instrument, um, not necessarily my first, but number one instrument would be guitar, which heavily influenced by a friend of mine, John Paul. Okay. JP, we call him. JP, yeah. Yeah, but, I remember um, JP. Yeah, when I came back from the States in the wreck that I was, because um, I had some a rough time in the States as mm-hmm. a teenager, and um, decided I had to leave to clear up my mind, literally yeah. get, um, clean from, from drug addiction. So mm-hmm. when I came back to, to Belize, one of the places that welcomed me was Mount Carmel High School. They gave you a help. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I met, I met John Paul there. He was a musician. He was their lead okay. musician for the school. Okay. And yeah, guitar, like, guitar lessons. Where, you know, thanks to him, he actually provided us with a free guitar and uh, started teaching me. Once I caught on, it's something that I, you know, I grew to love it. Started including it in my own music because the music we did that he taught us was gospel music, praise and worship music, okay. which is great. Okay. I recommend it for anyone who who uh, wants to do vocal training because it does help you to train your voice. Okay, um, I did not know of that. Of course, you get to learn instruments, to play instruments as well. But yeah, that's what made me stick with guitar, and it's something I still play to this day. Uh, I actually would love to expand and learn other instruments, but we, you know, we know that's something that takes time and focus, and there's only so much you can focus on at one time. Right, that's uh, right. something that I realize as well. So do you think that music was sort of like a healing for you? you? You talk about coming from the States, and I think that that's a segment in its own that we could revisit another time. But you came back from the States, and you were healing from a lot of from a lot of what happened there. And, you know, music was sort of like your outlet for healing from the past. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that's uh, the best way to put it. Couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, and it still is, you know, it was back then, it still is now, and I think that's something that's going to continue to be a healing uh, conduit, so to speak, in the future, because not only for me as a musician, but also for, for people who, who meditate on your music. I think a lot of yeah. musicians don't okay. take time to think about that. Who's listening to my music right now? Who's right. benefiting right. or right. being destroyed by my music right now? So I know I have... A couple of songs that I'm not so proud of that expressed a little bit of a dark side of me, but nevertheless, I think it's. I still release them because I think that it's important for people to know you're only human. You have good, good, a good and a bad side to you. But for the most part, I try to promote the positive side mm-hmm. because that's what I want people to hear, listen to, emulate, like I did when I was a kid. I want people to follow good. Um, good examples and good advice, not uh, a lot of the garbage that you hear out there. Although it sounds great, it's not really the best thing for society, you know? Yeah, and yeah. I think musicians need to, need to dwell on that. A little need bit to more. dwell on that that social responsibility that comes along yeah, with yeah. with being a musician. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. How long were you playing the guitar for? I would say 15 years? <laughs> no. <laughs> 13 I years. Fly, yeah. <laughs> yes, well, I mean, that, was, that was 1918 that I started, so yeah. right now, yeah, definitely. I just released a song yesterday, last night, that I made around the time that I started playing guitar because I was a high school senior. Yeah. So, yeah, that would have been 13 years. 13 years ago, I started yeah, playing guitar. Cynthia. Cynthia was a baby. Cynthia was three years old. Oh my gosh, that was so long ago. Wow. Well, none of my kids are born yet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. I mean, wow, that's something. That is something. So you've been a musician, not only a performer and a rapper, but you've been a musician for a while, which I think is a great plus towards being in music. So two more questions, Harry. One question. Um, 
who inspires you and do you ever think you would uh, get into other elements of the music industry like maybe production or writing i know you already write a lot of your stuff but do you think maybe like you would want to lend your hand to writing for other musicians and stuff like that or production producing music all right so there's two parts to that um mm -hmm. one was uh, who inspired me yes i'd say i'd say um i have a couple okay um, solid um I'd say there's, I'd call them solid pillars or beacons that guide me, even still guide me now. I look at them now as heirs because of how far I've come. But when I started, they were definitely role models for me to kind of guide me as far as, um, you know, how should your music sound? What kind of music you want to bring out? Um, and a lot of them, honestly, a lot of them I didn't hear before. I didn't know of until you played them in your room <laughs> as, a, as a young woman, you know? Like Buster <laughs> Rhymes, for example. Oh. Those people, I, the first time I heard them was coming out of your room with your right, dog right, right. listening to Buster Rhymes. You know I mean? <laughs> um, so you have a lot to do with the, some of those influences. Um, Busta, Busta is definitely one of them. Definitely. I think he's one of the uh, most underrated um, musicians, artists out there. That yeah. A lot of them don't make it to where you'd want to see them make it to, for whatever reasons those may be. Mm -hmm. One of the top artists that influence me still today and that you know make me definitely have to stay on my toes and keep my skills sharp would be eminem because okay. um okay as even though he's not what you typically see as a big part of the hip-hop culture he came from that trailer part and became one of the greatest if not the greatest hip-hop artists of all time although he would humble himself and not really call himself that. Hands down, his uh, his success up to this point has shown, has proven anybody who says that that's a lie, that his success has proven them otherwise. Right. And so I have to I have to take my hats off to M for sure. There's a couple of modern artists that that I uh, start following as well because I don't underestimate anyone. It doesn't matter how many followers you have. You, you could just be that one person that does, doesn't get enough uh, attention as the other bigger artists come. Mm -hmm. But um, you, people like Tupac, of course, um, when when he was alive, and even now he's still influential. We got J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar. Okay. Um, um, Tech Nine is another one that's very underrated. Tech Nine, Tech Nine is my number one influence when it comes to keeping your music changing so much that people don't have any idea what you're going to do next. Like, you just completely hit them with curveballs. And that's what Tech 9 does. That's what I love about Tech 9 mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I can go on and on and on about lists of uh, artists that, that influence me, but there's just so many, you know? Right. And I think art, artists today, or if there's any artists listening to this, that's something that if you're not already doing, you should consider. Mm -hmm. And that is that um, anybody, big or small, no matter how big they are, it's, it's always good to think about how they can help you. How, how can they influence you in a positive way? And how do we influence each other in a positive way right. to make our music even better, you know? Because uh, nobody, nobody, none of those top artists that I mentioned can say that they haven't been influenced by another artist. They might not come with the same lines, the same style, but they may, they, they had to be influenced at some point, even if, it, even if it was only to steer in the direction that they went, right. so that they don't sound like someone, it was still an influence. I don't want to sound like Buster Rhymes. You're, yeah, you're being influenced by Buster Rhymes to go in a direction that doesn't sound like Buster Rhymes. You're still being influenced. Yeah, so yeah. I encourage okay. artists who are listening, you know, to do that. You don't, don't shut out and feel like you're the greatest in the world. You're the GOAT. You're just going to stay there and eat grass if you want to be a goat that doesn't look at <laughs> uh, other artists and, and take what's good from them and apply it to yourself. You know, that's like a number one thing I like about Bruce Lee um, is that he was that type of, uh, type of person that he will take what, right. what, what he sees is good in other martial artists and other people yeah. and he would try to adopt it to his own style of doing things. He's very eclectic, yeah. Um, and so the second question was, what was it? 
<laughs> Did you? Yeah, ask? I know. Sorry, I talk a lot. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> oh, you should hear mom when she's on here. It's 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 a hoot. Like we never get to the point. <laughs> I'll set, I'll set a week aside just for that second. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what was the second question? I think it was something like, so the people that inspire you and also... I can't remember what the second part was. Let's see. Um, um, hang on a second, Harry. Just a moment. Um, like what, what I have a meeting with and why? Yeah, uh, which artists would you meet and why would you want to meet them? Because we just cannot, we just, I should probably have written them down or I don't know. I'm sure when I review this video, then I'm going to know what I asked you. <laughs> Maybe I should have asked you one question after the other. Ah, okay, so I just wanted to ask you which artists you would want to meet and why. And I think the other question has to do with, um, nope, it's not coming to me. Sorry. Oh, well. So which artists do you think you would want to meet and why? That's, that's, a, that's a kind of a little bit of a tough question because there's some, there's some artists that, I mean, of course you'd want to meet somebody for some kind of mutual benefit. Mm -hmm. and there's some artists that can that can benefit you by helping you to get bigger, you know. And yeah. there's other artists that can benefit you just because of their knowledge and wisdom when it comes to doing what they do. I think yeah. once again, I'd have to say that I'd want to sit down with with Eminem and see how it is that he managed to make it in a culture that was predominantly black, you know, right, and right. still, still be lasting even to this day. I mean, he started music, literally started music the year that I was born, which makes it about 30 years that he's still, still here 30 years after. You Interesting. Know? I, Interesting. I mean, that's, that is a great accomplishment. And I don't want to know how to do exactly that. If not even more than that, I think um, there's other artists that are still that are still releasing music that started before him, mm -hmm. but none of them are, are nearly as big as he is. If he drops a song today, he's got millions of views in hours, you know, and, and tops the charts almost every time. So what about and people like Jay Z or even thirty years after? And I mean, he's, he's a worldwide artist. Like if. If you go to down the street, if I go down the street and I ask some random person, hey, do you know who Eminem is? The answer is 99% of the time is going to be yes. If I go outside and I ask them, hey, do you know who this is some other artist that Snoop Dogg is, for example? Yes, yeah, some of them would know, but there would be a little bit less people that know. And the reason why I talk about down the street is because I'm here in Belize, completely a different country, right? Mm -hmm. And I'd imagine the same could be said all over the world that Influence-wise, when it comes to influence, he's definitely done a great job of that. And so I'd love to sit down and see, you know, how is it that you got to, to where you were? Interesting. And yeah, I, I think, I, think me, I might actually, you know I mean? yeah. That's if you're not trying to influence the world with your music, then I don't think you're doing music for the right reason. It shouldn't just be about money. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. those, those are the people that are fake and usually don't last long. Yeah, I think I, I think I might have to agree with you there because I'm thinking like other artists like Jay Z and all the other guys that came out with Run DMC and Grandmaster Flash, all those guys have really civiled out. They're not really as popular as they used to be right now. Like you can't ask a millennial like who they are and they'll be like, oh, they're this, this, and this. But um, I actually remember the question now that I remember Jay Z because he's one of those artists that's now. Uh, producer has his own label and so I kind of oh, yes. that's what the question was is do you see yourself going into other aspects of music like production and writing maybe writing for other artists I'm sorry sorry guys my kids are here I'm in the kitchen because that's where the best lighting is right now at this hour it is nine o'clock and so they have left but, you know, we're keeping it very, very real and very live. So <laughs> that's a part of it. Okay, they just came for some chocolate. And 
yeah, the beat goes on. So Harry, would you want to get into like production, writing, um, and other things? I know you say you want to learn other instruments should time and, and energy uh -huh. prevail, but are you, are you also considering perhaps maybe like maybe having your own studio and producing for other artists or writing for other artists? Is that something that you think if all, if and when all goes well, it might be something that you can be wanting to invest time in and money in later? Yeah, I'd, I'd say most definitely, um, especially producing, it's it's important as a musician, just as it is as an artist who does paintings, to have a, a gallery, right, a, a place or where you can go and express your art. And, and I think that's the number one thing as, as a musician, is to have a place where you can go and record just as if you went to a professional studio and, and I think that's one of the first things that most of the big artists do is they make sure that they have a studio close by where they can go and um, you know just express themselves and at any time of the day or night be able to go and drop a song because that's what I was dreaming about just a few seconds ago you know so right right yeah okay yes okay. for sure um, and I try personally I try to produce my own my own stuff Actually, most of the music that I have on my YouTube channel, Crave Topsy, is is was produced by me. Uh, mm -hmm. I have maybe uh, a, a few, like like a handful that was that you know I got other producers to do it for me. But most of the music that I have, I, I try to produce myself just so that I can know what I'm doing to be able to help others who would want to go into that as well. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, branching out from production making beats, doing other writing for other artists. Um, I, I've thought about that before, but I, I, I'm a person that I rather, I rather teach you to fish than to, you know, give you fish that I caught myself. Right. So okay. I'd be more for having workshops or sessions where we teach you how to write properly and, and how to, how to write your own music. Um, yeah, if you paid me to write a song for you, I'd do it. <laughs> I'm not going to stop you from giving me money and I'll, I'll write something for you. But right. definitely right. rather empower you to, to take that, take the reins on your own. Right. Um, I mean, I, I think I mean know, it in a yeah, way where it's ahead, like, okay, I, I think I mean it in a way like, okay, like if somebody were to commission me for a painting, you know, I... I don't want to like teach them how to paint their own selves, you know, if they want my, <laughs> if they think I'm the best person for the job, then I would, that, I'd be happy to take that commission. Of course, if it falls in the line of the things that I stand for and the things that I'm doing, I, um, that's, that's kind of along the lines, that, you know, are you, are you an artist for hire as well as, as well as doing your own thing? That's kind of in the direction is where I was going at. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Well, yes. when you put it that way, that's, uh, that, had birthday that, the other day, so Simon. That would be compared to something I have already done. Before, okay, cool. Which is like, um, you know, politician with, with. Maybe I hear that one of my songs apply to their ideology, so I sell them that song and say, "Hey, you can use this song for your political campaign, for example, or something like that." <laughs> it's still my work. But yes, they yeah. kind of commission me in a sense. It's just like someone telling you, hey, I'm going to pay you to do this painting for me so I can put it in my hotel. Yeah. Um, the, difference, the difference with ghostwriting, that's what, that's what they call it, is uh -huh. that mm -hmm. I'm writing it and you're performing it. Nobody would even know that I wrote it if you didn't want them to, you know, as opposed right, to you're right. hearing my voice, my lyrics, so you know that it's great even as actually being performed in the song. So there's a slight difference when it comes to comes to that. Okay, okay, okay. That makes that's a good observation. That's a good thing for people to know if they're interested in getting into this industry. That is really important. <laughs> Last question, Harry. Um, so you're up for this competition, and there's some money involved. How is this going to? What do you plan on doing with the money when you win? Man, <laughs> I wish, I wish, I wish it was like um, six figures we're talking. <laughs> then I could be like, "Let's start, let's start." You know, like, what yeah. do you want to do with the money now? You know? <laughs> um, but I would say that I'd want to partially invest some of that back in 
into my music because it's like it's like a farmer, you know. A farmer will, will reap all the crops and be happy that he got this, but he will reinvest into producing more, you know. Yeah. Just because you. That's how he keeps his business going. So I think it's important that I do the same somehow with part of that. Um, like, for example, if I won the full first place prize of two grand, then, you know, I take a portion of that and I try to reinvest it into pushing my music even more. Um, because the fact that I won in the first place this would mean that it is an investment that is worth pushing. Otherwise, why yeah. would anybody vote for Raven to win this competition if they didn't think it was something worth it? You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. Um, that would be part of my, my thing. And of course, we're in hard times, desperate times, desperate measures. Um, <laughs> I'd have to definitely say setting aside something for, for survival right now is absolutely necessary. There's a lot of people out there who are struggling and have lost their jobs, they have to stay home in the midst of this, you know, pandemic that's happening. And, well, I can't say that I don't need money because we all need money to survive. <laughs> but I'm not someone that will sit there and dwell on my losses and think that money runs the world, you know. Mm -hmm. I count my blessings day by day and, you um, if I win, it's not so much more about the money, but it's just a recognition and help pushing, help the, the push that it's going to give me. That hey, this is the winner of Billy's Cup Town. You know, it's going to give me a nice push promotionally. Yeah, totally. Um, don't be, but don't be scared, Harry. Don't be shamed. You got kids. How many of them now? Four. <laughs> you got a wife. <laughs> Who's counting? Who's counting? <laughs> <laughs> Who's counting? He got. Good. People, he needs this money. He got four kids and a wife. Okay, he's a busy man. He got bills and responsibilities. So this money is gonna come in very handy when he wins. So thank you, thank you, everyone, and thank you also very much, Harry, for joining me on my channel. Um, uh, here we talk about food, fashion, and finding, and so this segment is about the finding, finding your way, finding art, and finding out what makes you happy in this uh, performance career that you are on the journey of discovering. And I really, really appreciate you coming on and sharing your story with us. This is only part one. Um, I do plan on inviting you back again to discuss many other things and to update. And so I'm going to try to, when I upload this um, video, um, to leave a link in the description box to your channel that people can go and check out your music. So if you would just send that to me later today, nice. so on Facebook, on Messenger, so then, then I can just copy, paste, and link it so that when I make the description, it's there. Okay? All right. Yeah, I appreciate, <laughs> uh, I appreciate the invitation, too, and um, I appreciate you having me here. Uh, we gotta we gotta do stuff like this more often. You know? Definitely. It's always good to support each other. Definitely. And uh, that's how that's how we grow together. You know? Yeah. Rather than dragging each other down, and yeah. Help each other up. You know? Um. Yeah. Totally. So, if there are no other um final comments on your part, Harry, I would just like to um leave the floor open to you to close off with whatever it is you want to say, or if you just want to, if that was your closing, then we can just say. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys again next time. Is there anything else you'd like to say, Harry? Yeah, um, yeah. check out the links. Um, go ahead, follow, like, subscribe. And mm -hmm. if you live in Belize, get ready for the finals coming up this weekend. I will be posting up what number you need to text. And I'll also be uploading the video, so you'll see that video okay. on the um, on my page. So just get ready, buy some credit ahead of time. <laughs> Make sure your phone is all topped up. So this is um this weekend is what day? Is the twenty fifth? Is that correct? Yeah, I think I think Saturday night. I think Saturday night is when he presents the okay. videos. So twenty fifth um, of July twenty twenty. Twenty fifth of July twenty twenty. Hello? 
Yeah, and then vote, the, and then the voting is gonna open from that point on, and then it closes. I think the voting closes a few days after, so probably by like Wednesday morning, the voting's already closed. Wednesday morning being, um, you know, twelve midnight. Okay. Tuesday finished. Okay. So, okay, that's good to know. So from the twenty fifth up until the twenty ninth. You guys can go in and drop your votes in and make sure that you lend your support. Holla at your boy and make sure that he gets gets his support from everyone. So, Harry, again, thank you very much. Good luck with everything. Keep us posted on Facebook and Instagram. Um, and I hope that, you know, you keep yourself inspired and keep your, keep your head up and keep on being um, creative. We love you very much. And I'll see you all again next time. Bye.